Okay, guys, pretty foxgloves for the theme of Foxy today. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I want to welcome you to this fun and relaxing day of painting. I'm going to show you how to draw these foxgloves. I do have a traceable pattern available for you. It's on my website. All the links are down below in the more information. If you're on a phone or a tablet, next to the title, there's a little black triangle or gray. Click on that and it will drop down all the information. YouTube doesn't necessarily make it as easy as one would think it would be to find all the information. In that information, you have all of the materials, including that I am using Turner acrylic gouache. I have variety of brushes. I don't necessarily have all the brushes listed, but what I'll be using today, I've used already a Simply Simmons one inch flat brush and I just put black on the background. So that's probably all we're going to, well, we might put in some of the fun foliage also with the bigger brush. Then I do have a 3 8 inch flat brush or bright, and this came with my Turner Acro Gouache as a try it uh, from, or free with purchase from Jerry's Autorama. I am not sponsored by them or anything. It just came with the package. And then I have for some details, the number two round by Silver Brush. It's a ruby. And I have the number one rigger from the Mimic Creative Mark set from Jerry's Artorama. Thank you guys so much for all being here. Wow. Oh, and we might do some scuffly stuff with this sort of blender. It's a filbert that has, um, I'm not sure if they're natural bristles or what, but they seem a little more like natural. And this is an M Royal soft grip and it's a decorative painting brush from Michaels. Woohoo. Aha, I see people who are working on projects of things from my husband's art. That's great. Or from being inspired by my husband's art stuff. My husband just finished 365 days of painting every single day. It's quite crazy. I am trying to figure out if this is just too bright. Nope, I can't go any, any lower. I have a... a light panel up here to my side and it's really hot on my face today. <laughs> oh well, we're just going to get going. I'm going to show you how to draw this foxglove. And if you look, these foxgloves, let's see if we can zoom in on that. These foxgloves, they're basically just a cylinder with a ruffle around the end of it. And they do become, they come closed at the backs. They look like little slippers kind of like Fox would slip their little feet into them and go running around. I love these. Today's theme was Foxy or prompt word for the acrylic April. And so that's why I chose Fox gloves. I, you notice I'm trying to do more flowers because you know, flowers are fun. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so this back, this background was painted in with the jet black. The other colors that I'm going to have out are Carmine, Prussian Blue, Viridian Green Hue, which is kind of the phthalo green in this set, Violet. Interesting. Is it not running? Then we have Permanent Lemon, White, and Permanent Yellow Deep. So I'm going to go ahead and get my General's Charcoal White Pencil. The background is dry, and one of the things I like is that it is matte. It is not shiny, so it really, it ends up looking like you're painting on velvet. So there. You have the right up there 
the picture of the reference. I'm going to hold this down here so I have one also. Let's see, can I do it? Maybe if I move my, whoops, wrong one. I'll just move the reference over here. There. Now you can see. I'm putting it not dead center. I'm going to move over slightly. I'm coming down from the top a little bit. And I'm going to have it come out down here in the middle. So it has a little bit of a little bit of a curve to it. So for the stem, we've got that little bit of a curve. And I'm going to go ahead and give me my thickness of the stem just a little bit. Just like that. Easy peasy. Now the top has this, it's almost like a little cone that is segmented to make the little flowers that would be growing out. Because the flowers start at the bottom, they get big here at the bottom first, and as they go up, the flowers are smaller, they grow from there, they uh, expand as this grows up. So down here in the bottom, we've got a few little leaves, and these are just nondescript, kind of pointy, not too pointy, just, just little leaves. So there we go. Flowers are fun, and they are a challenge. Yes, definitely. So I'm going to start working from the bottom up on this one now. I'm going to put in sort of a big U shape. That's going to be where this bottom flower is. And it has little ruffle around the outside. Then the next one, in that opening of the U, we're going to put, it's kind of like the lip, the bottom lip of that petal. And I'll go ahead and put the outside, it has a lobe, and then it's got another one. We may not put as many flowers in, and that's okay because this is a reference. It is not telling us exactly everything we have to do. It's giving us a, a guidepost to look at. I think I'm going to take and put sort of a teardrop there. It has a leaf on either side. Now that is this one. That's the third one up. So it actually looks kind of like a frowny fish. Isn't that funny? Oh, I do need to put the back of this flower on. That's okay. Just like that. See how that flower just went in? And you don't have to worry about the chalk lines because they're going to get painted right over. Now we've got a flower that's sticking. I'm not going to do this one right here. I'm going to move over and do this bigger one because I want, I want to show that side view like that. So we've got this joined up. It has a bit of, so it's got this, like a, like a letter, let's see, like a letter U that's been chopped off, and then a letter N that's flipped over the top. It's got a bit of a, loop, a lip sticking out, and then a line that joins it. See? Little things like that. We're, you know, we don't have to do everything. <laughs> so there we go. It's doing pretty good. This one feels like it's falling over, doesn't it? And that's okay. Now there's, I'm moving up. And I think I'm going to grab a couple of these right here. So we've got a little bud that's coming out on the side. I'm going to do that. And 
And then there's like a little bud. He's got like a little cap. That's this part right here. That's where the, gra the green bit is. And these are closed. This one's closed. And then there's these little guys right here. So I'll put one here. And basically those are just closed buds. And one right here. See, we, we edited as we went along. And that's what we do. We edit things as we go. It's still going to be very representative of our flowers. It gives us, you know, a little bit of variety in the sizes. And it does help to do the design on something that's black like this. I might even make that go a little bit more pointy up at the top. And there's a couple leafy bits, but most of those leafy bits we're going to have to put in after, as we put our flowers in because I'm actually going to go through and drop most of this stem that you actually can see. Let's see here. That's the inside of the flower there. And we'll be editing these flowers even more as we put paint on. Yeah, practice. Just... If you're using a chalk pencil, if you have some black paper, even construction paper, try drawing it on black construction paper. Then you can have a bit of an idea of where the colors are going or where your chalk is um, being put down. It's easier to see it. I could have used a, let's see, would that have shown up? It would have shown up a little bit, but not as, not as well. I could have used for myself a watercolor pencil, but I thought for, for ease of all of us doing this, it was easier to do it with the charcoal pencil. All right, we're gonna get this paint put out. Next up, next step, is so we're going to get this light, bright green and the indications of the greenery behind. And by having the flowers here, we know where we want to keep it dark, where we want to go light. And we can work the background around it somewhat. Hey, black cardstock will work. Absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and get this Viridian green, which is like a phthalo green. And I'll move my little guy there back up so we can get to the palette better. I don't need any more black. I don't need the red right now. We're going to take a little bit of Prussian blue. You notice I'm not putting out ginormous. Here, there's my little finger next to it. It's about, the amount I'm putting out is about the tip of my little finger. So you've been working on a painting of white fox gloves and can't get the shadows right. You know, white is, white is interesting because the shadows are actually reflected colors from things around it. So if you're doing white, but you've got green leaves, your shadows aren't going to be gray, just plain gray. They're going to be more of a blue gray or more of a um, green gray. So I'm putting out lemon yellow and permanent yellow deep. And the acrylic gouache is acrylic. So when you layer your colors, when a color is dry underneath, you will not be mixing them together they will lay on top of each other without mixing. There we go. All right, so I am going to go ahead and grab my big brush. Oh, and I do need some, I do need a little bit of white. Whoops, that's black. Don't need black. <laughs> Where did I set the white? There it is. Waiting for my 
my order from Jerry's to get here with my white gouache because you will use twice as much white as you do for any other colors. I'm going to go ahead though first and put yellow in. Even though the background is green, I want this yellow, a little bit of water, because then when the green goes on top of it, it will be nice and bright. So we're going to go and just put in some of that green or that yellow that the green is going to be going on top of and letting some of it show through. I'm using the flat brush, you see, and sort of setting it down and twisting, which is giving us that foliage feel without painting every leaf. Who wants to paint every leaf? Some people do. And even though it's not as bright over here, I'm still going to put some of that yellow there. I'm not being a slave to that, right? Remember, we, we let it go. We, we say, all right, this is giving me ideas, patterns, where the colors are going, but they're not perfect. Ah, the blending inside the blooms. Yeah, that's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to that. We will be blocking in these colors as we go. So now I'm going to take that Viridian green. Now it's a little bit too, too blue green for me right now. So I'm taking some of that permanent yellow deep and I'm going to start working some of that in. This is lovely and you know, out of focus. They don't have to be sharp and focused. And you see how I'm sort of just rolling the brush along? I'm dancing it down the canvas, just sort of moving my hand back and forth. Because then it still feels kind of like there's leaves, like there's things growing back here. And this is mostly a green color over here, so I'm just going to go and drop that in. But that little bit of yellow underneath just gives it a bit of a spark. The same with this down here. Now I'm going to work some of that green right up and over so it comes out the other side just a smidge. Don't worry about painting over things. It's okay. You know, if you drew it in by hand, you know, you can draw it right back in. If you didn't draw it by hand and you use the traceable right there, then you can just paint, 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 paint everything. And then after it's dry, lay your traceable back down and trace it back on again. So it's easy and you don't have to don't have to be too worried. Now I'm going back in with a brighter green. I just picked up more of that lemon yellow with the green that's in my brush. Makes it a slightly different color. There we go. Do, 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 do. I want some of that brighter green up here. Layers, 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 guys. It's acrylic. You can work right over the top. See, it's getting a little bit bumpy right there. That's okay. I'm gonna take a bit of white with that, that green, and I'm just going to start putting a few little highlighty bits. And that's just gonna pull forward some of those spots. Remember, this is not the, the, this part right here isn't the star of our show. The star is that flower, so. Now that I've got that on there, I'm rinsing my brush. See, this is the first time I've rinsed my brush. And I'm going to tap those white areas 
and make them blend backwards just a little bit. Since I worked wet onto wet pretty much, everything was wet. Just picking up that color, move it around. Don't like what it looked like, move it around. Not happy with how your painting is going? Let it dry and paint over it. It's only, you know, this is being painted on paper. And we're using such small amounts of the, of the paint that really we are, ooh, I like how that blue went in. We're being very economical. We're not using up a lot of paint. So don't feel too, oh, I like that. I'm going to take some of that blue in there. Don't feel too um, discouraged if you have to go and put more paint in or try a different try a different way. Like right there, I wanted to make a bit more of a hole. So I'm taking this blue over the top of all these wet paints. And that's giving us a darker version. It's still a color, but it's making holes in my in my leaves now. And it's going to that greeny side without having to mix any yellow actually into the green. Dancing strokes, absolutely. I like it. I like it too. Layer your colors. Don't be don't be worried. Like I want maybe a little bit more bright. Didn't wash my brush out. Still had some Prussian blue in my brush. I'm putting a little more light in with yellow. That lemon yellow. Maybe a little bit of that permanent yellow deep. You start with broad strokes and you start going down into your softer strokes. I'm actually getting really close, I think, on that background. Maybe a little bit more darker blue right up there. Didn't like how that how that went. A few little dots, dashes. And I'm, I'm just, my brush is constantly just moving. You can do this with regular acrylic paint. You could do this with regular gouache. You can do this with the acrylic gouache. You can do something similar with uh, watercolor paint itself, but you have to, uh, you have to add gouache, a white, if you're working on a dark background, because you have to make your colors opaque because regular gouache is just opaque watercolor. I think a sponge background would look really good. Thank you. Thank you, Gina, for catching that question for me. I appreciate it. Yes, a sponge background would be, would look beautiful. Maybe we'll maybe we should try a sponge background on one sometime. Anybody interested? I can do that. <laughs> I think I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to let those dry that background dry a bit and I think I will take this flat brush and I am going to put the carmine out now and the violet now the violet is basically going to be a tempering color for me it's not these are not purple these are a magenta mauve colored flower. So, you know, we're, we're not too, um, it's not going to be to the purple side, but I'm going to be using that violet with the Prussian blue. When I make the dots on the inside, I'm going to be making shadows with the violet and the carmine with maybe a little bit of Prussian blue. We still have our yellows out and the Viridian green and white. So I think we're good for all of the colors. There we go. <laughs> so, oh, 
So what have you, have you guys been finding um, fun things to do besides watching my shows during your lockdown? Now I'm taking a little bit of the uh, carmine to my yellow, my yellow deep, making kind of an orange. Then I'm taking a tiny touch of the Prussian blue into it because I need a bit of a brown tone, maybe a little bit more Prussian blue, then a little bit more of the yellow. Ooh, now I went really green. So now I need more of the, the carmine. Ooh, that's perfect. I've got a lovely greeny. You can't really see it, but it's, it's a lovely kind of green brown tone. And that is what I'm going to go in and put my stem in with. And we can, we know that we can darken it with a little bit more of the red. I do want it to show up. But see, we've got a nice kind of brown. Now I want to sort of darken it. And instead of darkening it with blue, I'm going to darken it with the red, which warms it up, but it makes it a different tone. Crocheting is an amazing thing to do. Let's see, that's not quite dark enough. More of that red into it. But see, that's a, a lot different tone. There we go. That's making me happy. And then up here in that green bud area, there's these little leaves. Look at that. We'll just start pulling it out. Yeah, having things to do while you're watching TV is a really, really good thing. I am going to go ahead, now that we've got that, uh, now that we've got this over here done, I think I'm going to just enlarge my screen just a bit for you. So pardon me for moving this around. but I think that's going to make it easier for us to see the flowers. And you see how just putting a little bit of that reddy brown up here makes us think that we've already painted that top of the flower. Yeah, crocheting, and I, I like to crochet. I find that I like knitting even Crazily enough, I like to knit more than I like to crochet, but I can go a lot faster with my crocheting than I can with my knitting. Weird thing, but true. So what we're going to do first is we're going to, to block in these flowers. And I'm actually going to make a lighter tone of that carmine, and I'm going to add a little bit of the le lemon yellow to it which makes it a little bit brighter, a little bit orangey, but it's not making it go pink yet. And you can fit, oh, there, you can see how bright that is right there. I'm not gonna be able to show you my, um, well, maybe I can, a little bit. Slide my palette around, there we go we'll make this work. So I'm going to go ahead and take a tiny touch of white into that now. We're trying, we're making a lighter version of color, but we don't want it to be totally pink. There we go. So now we have a bunch of versions of color. We're going to go ahead and put, there was that little one that was up here that's starting. There was a little one up here 
we're just plopping in now. We're just blocking in those colors. There's one that's facing forward a little bit down here. We have one that's facing upward a little bit. This time I'm making it more with drawing up over the top and coming down from the bottom and making it like a little lozenge shape. I think that Ooh, you know what? I think this one right here, I'm changing it. And I can. I'm going to bring it down forward. Bring that one down forward. And then we have it, the next one over that was coming down forward also. And if you wanted to do this as a very impressionistic type of painting where you're not going as detailed, you could actually just go in and do it with these types of shapes. And it would be really, really fun and easy. Now I'm going to go here and this one is that one that looks like it is a fish with its mouth open. But right now we're just going to go and paint it all the way in. And this one over here, because it is completely open, I need to make a decision. Do I want to just paint the whole thing over? There we go. So paint pouring is another thing that's a lot of fun, yes? Yeah, I remember the answer Harry's other question about teaching painting with a paintbrush or, or drawing with a paintbrush. Draw oh teaching drawing with a paintbrush. Yeah. Ooh. Have you done any you know, I don't think I've done an actual tutorial on drawing with a paintbrush, but we certainly could. We certainly could. Now, one of the things here is with this background being dark, it actually helps us when we're... Um, now, I just picked up a tiny bit of white into that color just because I want to mark where the outside edge of this one that's open. And now it has a bump and it has a bump and then it's little like little pouty lip that comes out and then you then you're coming around and this edge of this flower here is pretty much hidden. It's only a light line. So we're going to pick up a bit more white just so that we can keep track of that light. And now that I've got the, the lighter tone on my brush, I'll go here. and start figuring out where the opening actually ooh did my dark go dark my dark go dry oh well see that's one of the things when you work with your colors really thin like this it, i mean when you spread it out it gets um it dries out <laughs> it dries out that's what i'm trying to say so I'm just taking a bit of darker color that I just mixed up really quick on my brush just so that we can get that opening there. And doo -doo -doo, that was with the yellow. And just a touch. Not that much. See, if you get too much on your brush of a color, just brush it off on the palette. Then you can pick it up and get the right amount because sometimes the brush just grabs way too much color. This one is there. I just want to firm that up a little bit. 
this one right here. They're darker as, they're, as they are in, and then it works out towards the front and it gets lighter and lighter. Gives you that sense of depth. This one down here, I'm actually going to shift it a little bit. You'll see what I mean here. I drew it up a little too high, so we're gonna go like this. We're gonna bring it down. There's the top of that opening top petal. I'm using the brush, see? Just use the brush to give you the shapes. Now, some white. Like that. Just so that we know where, where we are. Now, the back of him, I'm going to have to put in a bit more carefully. So he's coming around and out and down. I will have to put those, yeah, I'm just going to do it. I should have painted this part first. So paint the body of your flower first. painting it with the direction the body of the flower is growing. I'm going to put some of that in here. You want it to have all the color. That's going to be a little darker under there because it's layered. But see, we're already starting to get the feeling of these flowers going in. Yeah, I, I did acrylic pouring on my channel for two years. So if you're interested in acrylic pouring videos, I have two years worth of videos. I have probably the one of the best um, beginner information videos, the, top, the 10 things beginners need to know. I also did a lot of experimenting and comparing products and helping people uh, make, make good decisions on the products that they're using. So, but you can do your acrylic pouring just with plain acrylic paint and water. You are not limited to needing special products. Just craft paint and water will will pour. And I have videos on that. Oh yeah. It's 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 fun stuff to do. See the top of that flower is going to start working in lighter. I need to not go and start doing details on one till I have all of them in though. So look at, we still have this one right here that needs to go in. So, and I need to remember that the back of it needs to go in. So I have to drop this down just a little bit. We've got the back of it there. And that petal that comes around and we've got a petal that comes around. This one right here though, this is our star. This is the one that is the, going to be the main focus. This one is a supporting character. It's underneath holding him up. So I'm going to actually make this one darker right away. I put a little bit of Prussian blue into that carmine red that was on my brush so we can get going darker back inside. And then we're going to pick up a little bit of white for out here on the front edge.
flip your brush over. Many times when you're working with your paint, you start getting a little bit frustrated because I know I put paint on my brush, especially with this paint. Your brush is a lot more full of paint than you think it is. So put a little bit of water on your the tippy edge of your brush and that will help you. Oh, that's looking good. I think I'm going to go back up here to the top. I want to put a little bit of this dark and a little touch of that dark. These ones up here are a little more impressionistic. They don't have to be as detailed. <laughs> you know, I was really surprised that that uh, how well that lion with the using the string for the mane. Now, it was fiddly, but it was fun. So I have uh, several several uh, playlists of those videos also. And I have a playlist for all of my videos that I've been doing this month for Acrylic April. If you are so inclined, several flowers. Tomorrow is going to be uh, roses. And I'm going to show you how to draw your roses with a pencil on a piece of paper first, or a pen on a piece of paper. And then I do have a traceable for the roses. And I will even show you how when we're putting them in using a brush. So to draw the rose petals on. All right, I need to put more white into this now and more of that, then pick up the, that yellow and make a really deep red orange. And you can't see that color. There it is. It's a really deep red orange. So I took the that carmine pink that I made with the white and I added some of the yellow deep to it to make a really deep orange. Because underneath I see some orange colors in here. And We're just getting those indications, little indications of more flowers getting ready to, to bloom. I do want to put some green leaves up in there. Let's see, a little bit of that orangey yellow color coming out this way. To get those nice and finished, up here at the top. I'm going to get some of that yellowy green made with lemon yellow, Prussian blue, a little bit of the yellow deep, maybe a touch of the viridian green, and then kind of load my corners up here just a little bit with more of the yellow give it a little stroke off. So now my color is loosely mixed and I can go and give little, little green bits here and there and have them end up being really, really fun, varied, little green bits and then we can take once once this paint is dry we can go in with our wet brush and remove some of those uh, chalk lines uh, 
you know, that's okay. I think in this day, we need as much as we can to be relaxing and to be calming. So if I am relaxing and calming you into taking a nap, that's fine. Just let the video play. <laughs> so I'm taking a little bit of white into my carmine and just getting a tiny bit of that to make little sort of shimmery highlight. Just little shimmery highlights. These are not bright, bright white. At this point, we are not bright whiting anything. I have been told that I do have a fairly calming voice and a calming way of doing things. That makes me happy to hear. So I'm taking that that shimmery pink. Shimmery. It looks shimmery. And then taking some of that straight carmine. And then I'll be able to blend. Because what I needed was two colors on here to blend through. <laughs> uh... I'm, I am not a therapist, but I am somebody that can help people relax, I guess. And, you know, really, that's, I think that's what we want from our art, isn't it? We want it to relax us. I know that it can energize also, but I'm more in the, the camp of, I want my art to relax. So, now... The deeper part of the back of that that flower throat or in the in the the paw of I don't know why these are called foxgloves, except that they look like little paws when they are closed. I know that foxglove is a beneficial plant and for many years it was used medicinally. So now I'm just, I just cleaned my brush and I'm just moving a little bit of that color, that darker tone, and just slowly working it out. I'm wiping the brush off and then working out a little bit more. That way I can work it out to the edge and end up with more of a smooth, a smooth flow to the inside. Now I can go back and take a little bit of the white and hit that highlight out here where the light shines. And I can again take my brush, got it clean, smooth out. And you see how as you're tipping over that edge, going towards the inside, it gets softer. It gets that tone lightens up or softens up that margin between and you see how we end up with something that looks like it's going inside. There we go. I am going to go ahead and get the darker inside of here. I think I'm going to take, try doing it with a little bit of that violet and the carmine this time. Let's see. Can I get that around where you can see it? Ugh. The way it's on my palette, I have to keep rotating my palette and not push the paint underneath of something on my desk. All right, so carmine and the violet. Ooh, that makes it almost a, a real magenta. Tiny touch of Prussian blue. So this one, 
want to get that inside here really quite dark. So this is going to be a fairly longish video again because whenever I do the drawing lesson, it makes the video a lot longer. So and then as we come towards the front, even though it's going to be behind that lip, it's still a little bit darker, but not as dark. And since I have this darker tone, I'm going to start putting the back half of the opening here into the dark. I'm using darker versions of the tones on the flowers. So that way we are well here. Let's let's zoom out so you can see the whole thing in a in the whole view. So that's where we are right now. That's where we are right now. And I'm looking at this going, I'm going to need to soften down a little bit of this bright green because it needs it needs to be softened down just a little bit. Hey guys, <laughs> commercial time. If you are new here and you've never watched my videos before, welcome. I am so glad that you're here. I am glad for all of my returning visitors and community members and patrons. I really appreciate you all. If you're interested in supporting my channel, many ways to do it. Many that don't cost anything. Top one that doesn't cost anything subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, and then watch the videos. The more you watch of my videos, the more YouTube will then share my videos out to other people who like to watch the same things you do. Thank you. <laughs> it really helps out. And if you want to help monetarily, I have many different ways to do that listed down below in the more information box with all of the materials. And I don't think I ever said it. I'm painting on 140 pound watercolor paper. So um, it's cheap surfaces to paint on. The paints, because we're using such a small amount of paint each time, these are very economical. So there we go. <laughs> Remember, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And now back to the close-up view. <laughs> All right. So now I'm looking at this and going, okay, I need to, I need to figure out which direction I'm going start with the bottom one here now. I'm going to go to the bottom one. I'm going to get it done and then I'm going to work my way up. And I hope that that makes sense to you. It's the way my brain is seeing it and we all see things differently and we all have different ways that um, make sense to us. So do it how it makes sense to you. My way is not the only way. I will never say just do it the way I do it. You know, we, we all have ways that we, we figure things out. So, ah, there, see, that's getting to be nice and dark under there. Now I'm going to take a bit of white and I'm just going to sort of, uh, the white is to the outside of the petal or the outside of the, towards the outside of the flower and I have dark on the inside. So when I'm stroking here, it is giving me a blend. Look at that. Kind of like those double loading things. I don't do double loading. I do not claim to have any real knowledge of how that works, except for what little bit I accidentally do here and there. <laughs> but I am going to work that all the way out with the lightest tone towards the very outside. And when I flip my brush, I flipped it this way. So that way the, 
light, see how the light is right here? When I flip it, the light is still on the same side of the flower. So little things like that. And then I'm just taking the light corner to smooth out that brush stroke. Light. There we go. And you see how we're starting to get the variation in tone and it's starting to change the flowers aspects. So now they're starting to look more almost 3D. So thank you so much. I know this is a long video, so if you have to go and do other things, thank you so much for hanging out. And remember, you can always come back and catch the rest of the show at a later time. And see how we're getting the inside of that. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm able to help you understand in ways that are understandable. <laughs> I describe things that are going on inside my head. And I describe my process the way I think. So I'm happy I'm happy when people are able to tell me that what's going on inside my head is helpful to them. There. I just wanted a little bit more of a shadow right there. And then I'm going to go in and just get a tiny touch of white with slightly dirty brush. So I can brighten that edge up just a little bit without... Ooh, yeah. See? Now... Sometimes I do have a problem with, as I say, problem with squirrels. I will be talking along, saying something, and then I totally lose my train of thought. I am going to bounce up, and I'm going to do this one. Now, the reason why I'm doing this one right here is because he's behind this front pedal. Uh, just the way I drew him. But he's on top of that right there. Hmm. So maybe what we need to do is the body of this big, the big main one right here. We're going to do the body of that one. Then we're going to do this little guy. And then we'll do the front and put our details on the inside of the flowers. There we go. All right. So body, it needs to be lightened up. So we're going to go with that white pink like that kind of a, a almost a rose pink we're going to be using a lot of these same colors tomorrow I think for my roses and I'm not going to worry about it I'm just going to go right over the top of that little guy To get the back of this flower in, I want to, to get it balanced. There we go. And I'm putting my brush strokes in on this one in such a way that it looks like it's the direction the, the flower is growing. The body of the flower has little veining ruffles, almost like bunched fabric or gathered fabric, little pleats in it. I picked up a little bit more of the dark carmine. That's just carmine without any white added to it or yellow. That's looking good. I'm happy about that. Now I'll take some more of that, the white and maybe some yellow. 
we want a muted tone, a desaturated tone here. Kind of almost peachy. Give it a little bit of a warm tone. Maybe brush a little bit of that up here too as my highlight. Oh yeah, see? Have a color, find, the, find another place where that color can go. I'm gonna take some of that lighter tone out on the front edge. <laughs> oh, it's always fun to share your, your process. So when I make comments like that, guys, if you're here during the live show, I'm, and I'm reading people's comments and I'm just, just talking as if I'm, you know, hearing somebody talk to me. That's just the way I'm working it out. So now what I've done is I've taken a bit of the Prussian blue, a little bit of that violet, and more of the carmine, made a really nice dark color, and I want to go up inside the opening there before I do the finish edge because getting the dark color in, I don't want to end up going over my my finished edge and then have to go back in and do the dark and then fix the edge and then, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's just the way my brain is working today. All right, so now I'm going to take some of that white into that dark color and maybe not quite so much white there. I'm going to bring that a little bit lighter out. Oh, silly me. <laughs> you know, sometimes you do something and you go, ah, yeah, you know what? No. <laughs> While it's still wet, we can go like this and we can just wipe that off. Boom, boom, boom. Because what happens here on this particular flower is that he's got that frowny front of his face that's actually very light, very bright. He, like I said, this guy reminds me, uh, this one reminds me of a fish. So he's got this like open mouth. It comes out and down for that edge of the flower. And then it's over the top. I have to flip this over, sorry guys. I'm still using that 3 8 inch flat brush. And it sort of flares out right here. And then it's just got a shorter, sharper edge of light. Ooh, that's really, really light. That's okay. Cause I can take that and just work it right along this edge up here. And I know that sometimes I can be a little bit all over the place. I see something and I go, Ooh, yeah, I could work on that right now. That's part of my squirrel syndrome. Just taking that brighter light right over the top. Some darker underneath the chin. And right now it looks a little, little off, doesn't it? That's because this edge needs to let's see here. That edge right there needs to be wider. And then this one right here has to come down. That's it. See, 
you just work things out as you see it. It comes down like this, just little bits. And yeah, I do choke up on my brush quite a bit. Because I am a pen and ink artist, generally, if if people wanted to know what, if I identify as a certain type of artist, uh, pen and ink is my, my favorite, I guess. If I sit down to relax and do something, it's with pen and ink. Which is why next month is going to be so much fun because I'm going to be drawing and doodling. I need to get the back of this flower done now. It's going to come over the top of that edge of that one underneath, the big one. Even though the big one is the main flower, this one here is going to be on top of the back of it. I know crazy crazy way of thinking about that but you know some dark back here we're going to be getting some green on there also so 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 wow my my language skills sometimes can be a little bit lacking i'm sorry if that's you know just the way I am. I do like to talk a lot. So I hope that doesn't bother you either. I'm taking some of that darker color and just working it up just because keeping these colors moving through the whole painting just makes it feel more like it all goes together. Okay, that's, that's actually working out. That's working out. Take a little bit more light right here. Start getting his little pouty lip. That's the top edge of that flower right there. And there's actually a bit of a bright highlight right up on top. So we're just going to get that sort of satiny highlight on there. There's going to be more of a dark right underneath here. And these are, it looks like it's touching, but it's not really touching. It's over the top. So there's still some light that can come in underneath. I don't, I'm trying to... There, this way. So it's like this. It's over the top, and there's still light coming onto that main one here and sliding in underneath. So it can still have its highlights also. Ah, <laughs> uh, yay! It's always nice to see see friendly faces. Well, friendly names. <laughs> so there we go. I just picked up some of the... Let's see if I can... I picked up some of the violet and the carmine red and well, the white. <laughs> because we're zoomed in so close, I can't really can't really show it as well. So I guess why I was trying to explain that is because I was going to be going down here and brightening up underneath of that, that one, fl that one flower, even though this is under, it's still getting light. That's what I was trying to get at. Ah, <sighs> I went the long way round though. The reference is giving me indications of where highlights and shadows are, but I'm not completely married to those 
highlights and shadows and such. It's because I totally changed the, the layout of the flowers. <laughs> You know, and when you change the layout of the flowers, then you've changed the placement of the highlights. So now I'm going to put some of those higher highlights on the main petals here. Those petals that are the farthest out, catching the most light. Just like that. <laughs> so this one I've got a little bit carried away with how thick that upper lip got. So I want to thin that down. There. That's, oh yeah, see? That's starting to make it feel more like that, that flower has, has dimension. A little bit more dark right down here. There we go. <laughs> oh, well. I'm glad that you're here now. If you're just coming in, thank you so much for being here. And if you're a subscriber and you just realized that I'm on, make sure that you have turned on all your notifications. That's for YouTube and on your phone. So click on all notifications on YouTube, but then go into your phone settings or your, um, or your tablet settings and make sure that you've turned on notifications for YouTube. You can turn off individual notifications, just like what I was saying, you know, turn on all notifications if you want to find out what I'm doing. But if you don't want all the notifications on all the time, Turn them off at the YouTube side, not on your phone side. If you turn it off on the phone side, YouTube, even if you turn on notifications on YouTube, it will say, hey, they don't want notifications. They turned off notifications on their phone. So, you know, turn off the notifications at the YouTube side if you don't want to get notifications from somebody. I know I've been going live Monday through Friday, so I might be sending, you might be feeling like I'm sending out a lot of notifications, but it's just one. It will notify you half an hour before if you've turned on all your notifications. I'm going to grab some of that Prussian blue and the violet to put just a bit of that extra dark right back inside th there. And now we're going to go a little extra dark right up inside here. And work it down so that it gets softer and softer as it comes forward because we're going to be putting our white dots with the with the little dark kind of leopard spots. I just went too high on that little bit right there. That needs to be light, not dark. So I need to lighten that up. Take that back. Take it back. Take a little bit more light right up there. Where it's light, you need a dark. and having it blend slowly back into the dark. Whoops. There. Blending that margin softly. 
It's not necessarily slowly, but it's softly. If it's blended softly, then it feels like it the shadow is falling off as you come forward. Oh, we're really close. We're going to do those spots here in just a second. I just want to give this a couple bright highlighty bits. And this guy gets a bright highlighty bit right here, or a brighter highlighty bit. Yeah, there we go. And little brighter highlighty bits up on these guys. See, you you notice how I've gone back and done little little touches on these tiny flowers as we've gone along. That way they still feel like they belong to the same plant. Now I'm just lightly touching this with a damp brush to soften, blur, give that a little bit more of a glow instead of just being straight white. <laughs> this edge right here needs a bit more of that white. I'm working my way down to those last couple details, which are the insides of the flowers. Oh, and I do want to soften that up a little bit. So to soften that up a little bit, I'm going to take a touch of the yellow and some white. Now if your paint starts to skin over or you don't want it to skin over, I just have a mister. Um, just this was a lens, a lens cleaner bottle just from my eye doctor. And once it was empty, I'm able to use it. Okay. So I am going to take a bit of yellow and some white and some green and make kind of a sort of a softer. Now that's brighter, so I don't want that to be brighter. There we go. Soften it down, kind of a pastel of a green. But then I'm going to give it a little bit of that blue. And no, that's too much of a different color. So I want to try something different. I want to go, maybe it just needs to be darker. We'll just go blue and the green and a and touch of yellow and just, oh yeah, there, see? And I'm using the smaller brush not taking away all that light. But giving it a little bit more texture maybe. And that's still, this is just with that smaller brush. Now I need to go and put that in a couple spots here. I just wanted to tone down some of those bright yellow just for a little too much for me. Maybe make it a little bit more green. And sometimes things like this, you know, you go, um, um, don't know, don't know. Oh yeah, any kind of spray bottle that gives you a fine mist. I'm going to take my big brush because I am getting too fussy with that little brush. So I'm taking some of that yellow and the permanent yellow and a bit of the green. Yeah, there. I was just getting too fussy with that little brush. And it was making me feel like it was a little too 
a little too strong. Now a little bit more dark blue. There we go. So it still has a hint of yellow to it, but it's not going to be so much. It's not going to be quite so strong. It was feeling a little too haphazard for me. I wanted a little bit more a little bit more of a green, soft, maybe there's a tree or a bush. A little bit of light in it, but not quite so highlighty bright there. Woohoo! Okay. Now I need to break it up a little. <laughs> Break it up a little bit. Give it a little bit of that dark back. I think what I want you to see here is that you don't have to be, you don't have to be totally attached to something. If just because you painted it doesn't mean that you can't change it. So now I changed that. I'm feeling better about it. I'm going to put a little bit of some green that's coming back over that blue. So it looks like the blue is in the background. Boom. That's all it took. A couple little spots. All right. Let's zoom back out so that you can see a, see the wide view of it right now. We are going to go in and do the final little decoration on the insides. You see how putting that dark back in here has made it a stronger composition. It's not as bright and in your face. Yeah, it looks a lot better. And that is, you know, that's part of playing with it, figuring out what you're doing. Now I'm taking some of that green, the, and it can be a little bit of the brighter green and yellow. We're going to put those little leaves that are on the stem. A little bit here and there. Doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to Just a little bit here and there. Boom. Boom, bitty boom. Oh, let's see. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Before we do the, th the throats on those. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's like, before we do the throats on those, we do need to put a little bit of the, the green caps. Adjust some of those greens maybe a little bit. Just a bit. Let's go ahead and go back to that close-up view. So those pretty green caps. A little bit of a little bit of yellow here and there. Not not too worried about making it, you know, boom boom. Put a little bit of the that yellow right up in there. there. All right. So the insides in here, we're going to take our round brush and I am going to do these where I take pink on my brush. I'm Whoops, I don't want to leave that big brush laying in the water. So just a second. There we go. And I'm going to grab some cleaner water. My water was getting a little, a little murky. So let's 
grab some cleaner water. I'm going to pick up some of the white and a little bit of the carmine and just make a kind of soft pink. It's going to look bright. When we put these little spots in here, look at that. They're going to look bright. But then as we come forward, we're going to have to brighten up that, that pink even more. But by doing it darker in the back, it looks like it's in the shadow. Now I'm going to take a touch of Prussian blue and violet and just sort of very carefully those back ones, darken it up even more. Look how that just went into the background. And we actually don't have to put black spots on top of anything. And thank you for coming. I appreciate you guys being here. I'm going to take a little bit of that pink again. Just on some of those right here. And I'm going to work it out towards the front of that lip. Tappity tapping. And that gives us a beautiful inside of that flower. So now we need to get the inside of this one. So again, we're going to take that we've got the violet and Prussian blue, carmine. That's going to be my darkest dark down inside there. But it's going to look bright. And the reason why it's going to look bright is because it is lighter in value than that dark that's in there, but it looks like it's in the shadows. I'm using a lighter version of the dark color that's in the background. That's how you get that um, value change. Actually, I want to take that up because see right here, I want to make that a little bit darker. Boom. And I'm just looking around going, what do I need to do? Now I'm going to take a lighter version, just adding a little more white to it for coming forward. See? Lighten it up. As you come forward, just keep lightening it up. And it takes it from being in the shadow to being in the light. But it doesn't have to be pure white. Look at that. Oh, I am so happy. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right. So we need to go up here. This little guy, we need to get that darker color that's back here. Okay. So now it feels like he's going inside. We're doing good. We're going to pick up a bit of the lighter tone. And then we'll pick up just a smidge. Look at that tiny little smidge of light. Just down here in this front corner. And now you've just totally got that looking three dimensional. It looks like it goes inside. We're going to do this one over here. This one doesn't have quite as much. The dots tend to stay low. So we're going to go get, get our dots in. 
That's the dark bit back in there. We can come forward a little bit with that. And then let's add just a, a smidge of white to it as we're coming forward. It is totally amazing to me the way that just changing the value changes the entire effect of a color, of paying attention to the angles that you're putting things. So now it feels like this is a side view of this flower. You're looking around a corner almost going back in. So pretty. I want to go ahead and put a couple really fine white lines. I want to clean up right along this edge right here ever so slightly just a tiny little line coming down and then it comes up. What I'm doing is I'm making it look and feel like you can actually see the edge of those petals, the edge of that flower. Just a little edge, that's all you need. There's a little edge right here. Just a, just a touch. You don't need, you don't need to outline the whole thing. It's just a touch here and there and it pops it out away from that background. So like this right here, I need a little tiny touch of some white. Tiniest little touch, woo, that was too much. So I wiped off my brush and now I'm just dragging that little bit There. And that's how you save that. Boom. Tiny little touch. It's actually a little too bright still. So I'm going to take a bit of a pink and kind of tone that down. Tone it down. Doesn't need to be quite so bright. Still doesn't need to be quite so bright. So I'm just going to take, give myself a little bit more carmine. There. And then a touch of the pink. Soft, soft, soft. There we go. And now you could play with this and play with this. We're going to zoom out. Boom, bitty boom. Ha ha ha. Yes, I am one of those crazy people that likes to do a little bit of a chair dance when I get so happy. I'm going to go ahead. I'm signing it over here. I'm actually pretty proud of this. I'm going to, I'm taking a bit of the pink, that carmine. and maybe a touch of Prussian blue into it so it's not quite as in your face. <laughs> and I'm going to sign it with my little, my little signature right here. See, you can't even see it. So see, it's not in your face. It's not in your face. Now what I wanna do, clean house just a little bit so we can pull that tape off and see what it all looks like. Was I that silly me? Craziness behind me. All right, we're going to get this tape pulled off and see what it looks like. Definitely, we have to do our little crazy chair dances every once in a while. and pull that tape off and yep so some of the um, some
some of the background paint dripped behind. And I know I keep saying this every time, but I'll show you. Take some of your white gouache, clean white gouache, no color in it, just, just clean white. And you can go right up to the edge. And as long as that paint is dry, you can paint right over that with gouache. And it looks just like the paper when it's all dry. You might need to go and give it two layers, depending on how dark your overrun was. But you see how, see the difference? Fixing a fixing something like this, don't don't think that you've ruined your whole painting if it blurped out underneath your tape. You didn't. See? We can recover. And I usually go and do this before I take my my final photo. I don't know if you guys have been noticing. I've been putting the photo up onto the thumbnail. But look at that. <laughs> there we go. All right, guys, if you like this, I hope you will click that like button, subscribe to the channel, share this video with your friends. Oh, whoops, 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 whoops. Clean brush. Make sure it's very clean. There's that little bit of chalk. And I know that Mark is going to ask say something to me about it. And if you can't get the chalk to work off, just go in with a little bit of a, there, see, it's coming off in some spots. There we go. If you can't get it to come off, just go in with a little brush and your background color, whatever your color is. There we are. <laughs> Remember to like, comment, subscribe, share, 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 share. And if you do this painting, tag me at Deliberately Creative, and I will come and give you a little bit of love for it. Thank you. And remember, stay in, do something creative, take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I hope to see you back here again really soon. <laughs> Bye.